WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good afternoon. I'm Barbara Bailey. I'm Bill Bryant. A lot going on as we hit the hour here at noon. We are tracking a breaking news alert in Richmond right now where an officer, a police officer, was shot today. Now that shooting happened near Ballard Drive just about an hour ago. The officer was reportedly investigating a robbery when he was shot by the suspect, who was then shot by another officer. WKYT's Mark Barber is in Madison County now with the very latest breaking details. Good afternoon, Mark. What have we learned? Good afternoon, Barbara. Investigators have Ballard Drive here roped off with the crime tape, as you can see. There are a number of detectives, officers all out here on scene. They're speaking with neighbors. They're going door to door looking for information. Now, it appears as if this shooting happened in a lower apartment in these buildings here that you're seeing here on Ballard Drive. Now, we've been speaking with neighbors here for the past hour, and they describe hearing several gunshots. They say they could not see anything because the shooting happened inside an apartment unit. Now, they say right after they heard those gunshots, a large number of police officers and cruisers, they swarmed the scene, and then several ambulances took off. We're told that the police officer who was shot was investigating an armed robbery. The Richmond mayor says that the suspect in that case shot the officer in the head before they were shot by a second officer who was also in the apartment. We're told that the police officer was rushed to UK hospital. Again, he was shot in the head. At this time, we do not know how seriously he is hurt. Now, we have learned his name. However, we are waiting to release that until his family members have been notified. Now, neighbors are telling us that they are shocked by the shooting because they know the woman who lives in the apartment where it happened. They say that they do not know if she was the one who shot the officer or if she was just caught on the crossfire. But they say they did see that woman being taken into custody. And again, we have learned her name, but we are waiting to release it again until investigators are also confirming that information for us this afternoon. Now, the ripple effects of this shooting are already being felt. When this police officer was shot in the head, I was covering a, case, a court case in Madison County. After that officer was shot, the judge told the courtroom and all the officers, if you're in law enforcement, if you're an officer, you are free to leave. It was very dramatic. At that time, we did not know this, that this happened. And then when I grabbed my equipment and I went to leave, they told me that they understood why I needed to go. So again, the ripple effects of the shooting already being felt by many people who, who serve this community. Again, we're working to learn more information about this, trying to figure out how seriously this officer is, is hurt. And again, what maybe led up to these moments where that officer was shot in the head. Again, we are here gathering details. We have multiple crews on the ground here. You're working for more information. We'll be bringing that to you in another live report on WKYT News at 12:30. Live in Richmond, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. Obviously, the response was urgent. Officers from other departments helped escort the ambulance carrying the injured officer to UK Hospital, and that's where he's being treated right now. WKYT Sean Moody continuing our breaking team coverage from the hospital where the officer arrived about a half hour ago. Sean. Hey there, Bill. We've been here since about 11.30, and since then we've seen a whole lot of police vehicles pulling into the hospital. U.K. police are blocking the entrance into the U.K. emergency room, letting in some vehicles, turning away some others. Um, we're going to give you a look here at the grassy area in front of the hospital emergency room where there are several police vehicles. There are uh, several Lexington police vehicles, a couple of U.K. police vehicles, and even Fayette County Sheriff's vehicles. In fact, we just saw Lexington Police Chief Mark Barnard walk inside just a few minutes ago. Now, let's show you some video of what's been going on the past few minutes. We don't know what the officer's condition or the suspect's condition are. We've been talking with UK hospital personnel who don't have any information to pass along to us just yet. We believe that officer is already inside the hospital, but we haven't heard any updates from inside. We also haven't seen any kind of Madison County ambulances coming out, so we presume it's still there. Again, very active out here as several vehicles are coming and going. Back out here live now as soon as we get any information at all about how this officer is doing, we will certainly pass that along to you. For now, live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. All right, Sean, thank you very much. And of course, uh, we will keep you updated as we get additional details on WKYT.com. We invite you to join us there. Of course, as long as we're on the air here, we'll pass along the information that we get. Barb? We're learning more information about a central Kentucky teenager killed in an accident involving a forklift. It happened at a business on Kentucky 1295 in Garrett County. The victim is 17 year old Grant Thomas Oakley. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is in Lancaster now with more on how the teen is being remembered. 17 year old Grant Thomas Oakley was a senior here at Garrett County High School and a member of the band, which I am told just finished second in the state competition this past weekend. 
Now, Oakley died yesterday at UK Hospital. He was flown there after the accident at Bluegrass Agricultural Distributors. According to the Fayette County Coroner's Office, he was riding on the side of a forklift when he fell off and was run over. School officials say three counselors are busy helping students deal with the loss today. I'm told that Grant Thomas Oakley was a very popular student and will be very much missed by the many students here who are dressed up and wearing camouflage in his memory. Now, I've been trying to find out more about the accident, but I've been told by both local and state police that they did not work the accident. We're still trying to follow up on exactly what happened. In Garrett County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Phil, thank you. And the funeral arrangements are incomplete at Ramsey Young Funeral Home. The sentencing phase for a Madison County man convicted of killing an Ohio woman, then putting her body in a trunk, is underway just north of Cincinnati. A jury found 57 year old Daniel French guilty of aggravated murder last week. Police say French posed as a maintenance worker, got inside 87 year old Barbara Howe's retirement community, and cut her throat. Jurors started hearing evidence this morning. They'll recommend to a judge whether they feel French should receive the death penalty or life in prison. What's well, another day of above average temperatures in the bluegrass with highs back up into the 70s this afternoon? But colder air is heading this way just in time for the weekend. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our first alert weather center now with details. Micah. Boy, does it feel good outside again today? We're sitting in the 70s the rest of the afternoon. Everybody reaches the 70s today. But could we be seeing an 80 degree reading down south? Monticello, you're already 76 degrees. Most of us will finish off in the mid 70s. It looks like that mixture of sun and clouds will hold tight and the pleasant evening in store. So heading out to dinner later on this evening, absolutely perfect. I'll show you another good looking day tomorrow and then the rain moves in here on Friday. Are we talking any possibility of severe storms? I'll have that coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Micah. We'll see you then. Kentucky's brand new governor elect is taking the day off somewhat. Matt Bevan says he is spending today with his family, only holding some private meetings this afternoon to talk about the transition. The Republican handily won last night's election, defeating Democrat Jack Conway and independent Drew Curtis. Bevan becomes just the third Republican to be elected governor in Kentucky in the last 68 years. His running mate, Janine Hampton, will be the first African American to hold a statewide office in Kentucky. Families who need help in heating their homes this winter can now start applying for federal assistance. The Community Action Council will be taking applications for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP. WKYT's Rebecca Smith has details on how you can sign up. Starting today, you can go to one of any of the Community Action Council's five locations here in town. The location on Georgetown Street, it's a packed house today for folks waiting to get help with their heating bills. The waiting room's full of people trying to get their hands on half a million dollars worth of utility bill help. The federal government sets aside this portion for qualified applicants in November and January. The emergency funds available in January require a utility cutoff notice. November's subsidy portion is a little bit different. It actually gives them a credit on either their gas or their electric, or it can pay a portion of their rent if their utilities are included. It's just a blessing. And when you get blessed, a blessing is a blessing. So this is a blessing to people in need. We have a list of the Community Action Council's locations and corresponding addresses on our website, WKYT.com. You can go there to get that information. Also know that December 11th, that's the cutoff date, if you're looking to get assistance for LIHEAP. In Lexington, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Now, when you go to the LIHEAP office, you'll need to take this with you, proof of income and a utility bill as well. 2,000 people have already been helped online. 